Hello everyone, you're watching News Epicenter with me, Maria Shakil. One gold, two silver and four bronze. That is India's historic and highest Olympics medal tally and the heroes have returned home. We clinched our first gold in athletics with 23-year-old Neera Chopra's javelin throw of 87.58 meters. A subedar in Rajputana rifles, he battled injuries and disruptions due to COVID and threw the spear of destiny to clinch India's only second individual gold. Our men's hockey team won an Olympic medal for the first time in 41 years, recapturing the glory of the past, showing that we have what it takes to become global champions and live up to the legacy of the legendary hockey player, Dhyan Chand. Our wrestlers continue to make us proud with bronze. Medal winner Bajrang Punya getting a hero's welcome from members of his Akhara at the Delhi airport as well as Ravi Daya who backed the silver at the Tokyo Olympics. Girl power was on full display at the Tokyo Games. Mirabai Chanu won a silver in the 49 kg weightlifting category. India's first medal after 21 years in the sport. Lavlina Borgohain who clinched a bronze in boxing became the first female athlete from Assam to win an Olympic medal. Ace shuttler P.V. Sindhu also scripted history, becoming the first Indian female athlete to win two back-to-back -back medals with a bronze in Tokyo after a silver at Rio. India's female hockey team also scripted history by entering the semi-finals for the first time and narrowly, narrowly clearly missing out on the bronze after a thrilling nail-biter of a match against Great Britain. Beyond the shine of the medals, it is the inspirational stories of the Indian heartland. Athletes from very humble backgrounds who have battled poverty and patriarchy with sheer grit and determination to achieve athletic excellence and raise the tricolor to new heights. India may have scripted history, but we have a long way to go to match the other sporting powers of the world. But as the nation witnesses a revolution in Indian sports, what will it take to stay on the path to global domination, namely the Paris Olympics of 2024? Let me bring in my guests now. Shagun Chaudhary is an Olympian shooter, Vimal Kumar, senior sports journalist and author. Dr. Sunita Godadra, Godara is... Uh, Asian Marathon Champion and Arjuna Wadi. We have Shishir Hatangri as well. He's the CEO of Baroda Cricket Association. Sunita, I'm coming to you. There are many firsts to this Olympic for India. First medal for India in the track and field category by Neera Chopra. PV Sindhu becoming the first Indian woman ever to win two individual Olympic medals. Indian women hockey team scripting history by becoming the first women's hockey team from the country to make it to the semi-finals. Ravi Daya becoming the second Indian wrestler in the history of Olympics to clinch a silver. And I can go on and on. So for an award winner such as you, what does today mean when our contingent is back? The uh, first time in the history, uh, they have, uh, first of all, um, the way uh, they have got the med uh, medal. Made history in hockey, made history in athletics, and then now here when they are arriving at um, their homeland, the way they have got the welcome, you know, from the airport to Ashoka Hotel, it's it's something like uh, you know a double celebration, and uh, creating history in this uh, in such a great Olympics, you know, which is uh, you become legend when you win medal in Olympics. So uh, it, it's overwhelming, you know, very nice moment. And uh, they celebrated what, uh, when they won the medal. And now the second celebration, they are uh, seeing themselves, you know, uh, in person when the whole country is celebrating with them. Yes, all of us are it's celebrating. Really Those visuals are coming experience. in now from uh, the Ashoka Hotel where the ceremony is currently underway. Of course, a cake cutting ceremony is on. Now it's the women hockey team which will be cutting that cake. Um, all the celebrations and, and, and what a phenomenal performance it has been. Let me bring Shagun now. Shagun, you know, while we look at the medal winners, there are also those who made their pres presence felt. You know, uh, Bhawani Devi, for example, becoming the first Indian fencer 
to qualify for the Olympic Games or even Aditi Ashok from ranked 200th in the world to finishing fourth at the Tokyo Olympics. Uh, what does it mean when these areas where, you know, we were all usually used to think about the shooters, the weightlifters or even the kushti players. But these are the areas when India did not really make an impact in the past. But now they are making their presence felt. They are saying, count us in as well. We are Indians and we matter. I think we have a lot, lot to look forward to from sports in India. And uh, it's, uh, that's exactly what I was going to say, that uh, apart from the medal winners, I mean, this is the biggest haul that we have. So obviously, this, this Olympics is going to go down in history, not for, the, not for just the number of medals that we've won, but the kind of close performances and uh, the names that we are talking about, Aditi Ashok uh, missing it by a whisker, I mean, a four-phase finish is but A for effort, really. She's done really, really well. Uh, 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 Kamal Peet Kaur uh, for discus. Uh, uh, the women's hockey team, oh my God. I mean, I, they had all of us sitting at the edge of our seat and, uh, they, uh, you know, beating Australia and uh, doing so, so well. It's been absolutely, absolutely amazing. So, uh, it just goes to show that we're on the right track as far as sports is concerned for our country. And uh, especially uh, a big shout out to the women athletes who have made us so, so proud. And obviously, uh, you know, the medal winners goes without to say that, uh, uh, you know, the country is rejoicing because of them. And yes. uh, it's a new era for sports for India. Yeah, it's a new era for sports. Shishir, is this 1983 World Cup equivalent of Indian athletics? Uh, or are we comparing oranges and uh, apples? No, not really. I mean, you're on the right track. I've always said that, you know, the resurgence of Indian cricket uh, happened in 83 after we won the World Cup. And uh, if you look back uh, many years later, we will say that, you know, this Olympics at Tokyo was, in a sense, uh, the renaissance uh, for Indian Olympic sport. And uh, primarily because, you know, we had a very high traction on television. The broadcaster played a huge role in amplifying just about every performance. And that is so very important today uh, when you want to create stars. Uh, it's the reach that the broadcast can, broadcaster can create out of out of a, uh, out of a coverage and uh, make us so proud because then we are in the moment, we are seeing the moment, and uh, that's where stars are built. And uh, uh, like the 83 World Cup again, where everybody watched it live to see India become champions. We've seen a few champions or prospective champions uh, coming through in this uh, in these Tokyo games, and that is what it's all about. It's going to pump up uh, sponsors, pump up uh, uh, conglomerates and corporates to put in money and back these players from all across India who aspire to bring a gold for their country. Hmm. And uh, Vimal, you have written an open letter to the Prime Minister today. You have talked about uh, Khel Ki Baat and uh, the interest that has been taken by the Prime Minister himself. Uh, although I would say that our medal tally may be looking modest at this point in time, but something surely seems to have changed for Indian athletics and field sports. What do you think is driving this change? Is it that the government is making that extra push, that extra interest? And, you know, uh, somebody like Anira Chopra, who is a javelin throw, uh, he gets the opportunity and he gets a coach. Uh, so is it those facilities which were largely missing, that kind of support is being given to the sports now? I think it's a bit of uh, ev everything. Let's uh, let, uh, uh, And everyone deserves the credit. The federations are more proactive. They are spending a lot of money. The infrastructure has improved. And let's not forget, besides the government, the private, uh, the private, uh, you know, uh, companies which have taken, you know, care of a lot of sports, like for, for that matter, JSW, mm -hmm. Neera, Neera Chopra trains in, in those world-class facilities. Uh, and number of uh, private companies have come up and they have supported different, different uh, uh, sports and different athletes. So that obviously has helped. 
but more importantly i think the mindset has changed see and and um, may, many may not admit it but at the same time cricket has played its parts you know the popularity of cricket we are, we are getting the world class cricket team that has given the belief to other sports person from different uh, sports that we can be uh, world beaters as well if our indian if sachin tendulkar be the, uh, can be the greatest cricketer virat kohli can be the greatest cricketer we also can have a neeraj Chopra, who is the world's greatest javelin thrower? Hmm. This is the day which we were dreaming, a young athlete. So we we have so many things falling in place. Yet we still have a long way to go. I think it's uh, we are encouraging athletes the appreciation and everything is fine. But the sporting culture, and I think that will take a lot of time. We cannot be saying just in three three years uh, down the line in Paris we will be winning a lot of medals. it will not change hmm. yes i i assume the numbers will be better Now, how much we don't know because if you look at shooting we didn't win a single medal boxing yes. we could have at least one two more medal so there were games at least if luck were on uh, on our side india could have finished with maybe who knows five six more medals it could have been even like a, a dozen of medals but yes. what i am interested in what neeraj chopra has done a gold medal a single gold medal the you you can see the impact without neeraj chopra's gold medal india would have finished 66 yes. with his gold medal the ranking goes 47 if there was one more gold medal we would have finished 33 so you can see the significance of one gold medal yes. avita bindra has rightly pointed out almost nearly 11000 athletes participate in an olympic game and, and only 3%, 3% managed to win a gold yes so, so that's a very our, exclusive our, club yeah. but you know vimal the yeah. point that you made about the sporting culture and i'm going to take that forward with both shagun and uh, sunita shagun first to you how do we ensure that the sporting culture becomes sustainable particularly how do you sustain this at grassroots what are the solutions in terms of perhaps having more local leagues and how do you encourage this local leagues because they are responsible for those talent which is there in small towns जो गलियों में है जो गांव में है जो गांव में बसता है बिकॉज इफ यू लुक एट इट हियर इज अ बॉय फ्रॉम पानीपत हुज वन गोल्ड फॉर अस यू नो वट आई आई बिलीव दैट इट हैज टू स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द ग्रास रूट लेवल मोस्ट ऑफ दीज एजेंसीज दैट सपोर्ट एथलीट पिक दैम अप आफ्टर दे हैव वन समथिंग इंटरनेशनली I think it's very important to scout for talent at a very young age, and then nurture that talent into making that building that athlete. And that is what what's going to take the sporting culture forward. And uh, yes, visibility for the sport is absolutely. I mean, it's it's the most important thing because uh, we, no no Olympian and no medal winners want that. You know, uh, okay, it was a great extravaganza, the Olympics, and after one month, nobody is talking about it because there's cricket. So I think it has a lot to do with visibility, more, uh, more league, more uh, focus on uh, younger kids, nurturing uh, younger talent, and taking that forward. And I think corporate, like literally, I I feel it's very important to adopt really young kids. Okay, like China has like a really uh, regimented way of doing it, but as Indians, I mean, we have so much talent. It's amazing, and we all we need to do is uh, that. pick it up at the right age so that we don't lose so much time hmm. if we pick it up early then we have enough time to nurture that so that we are ready for if not paris in the next one yes so we need to start now into building athletes not not um, helping athletes once they have built through or built themselves through struggles like when we talk about if we talk about athletes today the biggest support system that they have is their family yes if their families don't support them initially they are nowhere uh near chopra's dad said that he had to go he found a gym for him at a very young age which was which was 24 kilometers some something like that away and he had to cycle there every day if he, what we have to do as as uh, uh, as all these uh, uh, you know talent search uh, expeditions that we do is find that talent at the raw age and then nurture it so that we have results in the coming olympic yes. uh, in the uh, forthcoming olympic yes those and are the visuals so in so fact forth. just a moment those are the visuals coming in from ashoka hotel where the felicitation ceremony of uh, the contingent is going to begin any moment now uh, all the medalists and others are present there uh, sunita 
you know, what is it about these athletes from small Mufasil towns with modest family yeah, backgrounds making it yeah, to the top of their sport? Yeah, I carry forward what uh, uh, yes. uh, just now you were asking. Uh, see, uh, first of all, um, wherever we have role model, if we start making the center point there only, because now uh, Neera Chopra has done so well. He has become a poster boy. He has become a golden boy. He has become a pride of India. Hmm. So just imagine from his uh, village or from his district, there will be so many who are looking upon you know, uh, him as role model and um, inspiring. And some uh, maybe you know, now aspiring to be a medalist also. Hmm. So why not start having center point excellent centers in the same place where uh, we have role models like Mary Com, uh, Mirabai Chanu, and uh, if we talk about only this Olympic, from wherever these uh, medalists and the performers have come, if we have center points there, so at least they will have a role model in front of them. Like uh, just now, Haryana uh, Minister has announced that we will have uh, one excellent center in Panchkula. Instead of making Neera Chopra head of that uh, Panchkula Excellence Center, if they make him ambassador of Panchkula Center and then carry forward with a lot of uh, sci uh, scientific approach and you know mental training, physical training and psychological training for all the youngsters hmm. uh, with proper coaching, then that Excellence Center with the ambassador like uh, Neera Chopra, many more will come up. Okay. That way, point, hockey, yes. uh, in Haryana, we have wrestling. So, so you very have to calm, make them more Chanu ambassadors because they are the icons. They make are inspiring the generation. Today. Yes. Uh, yes. Shishir, this specific point about that we have almost tend to forget their struggles. When they win medal, that is the moment that we realize that this person has potential. There has to be more backing in terms of private, private players. Can the private sector come and play a role in this particular sport? I think they can, uh, as long as uh, uh, the money spent is uh, monitored very closely, vigilantly. Uh, if you have, uh, if you have a talent uh, resource development uh, uh, team that can go around at the grassroots level, identifying talent and making sure that you know you, the brands or the companies adopt them, make sure that the basic. Uh, uh, necessities are looked after, like your education, your basic uh, diet at a very young age, you know, and relieving the burden of the parents uh, who may be from economically not so fortunate backgrounds. Uh, what it will do is give a comfort level within the homes of those uh, talented kids to say that, look, we are able to look after ourselves, don't worry about us. Also, privileges in schools, etc., where these kids get a, uh, you know, a, a bit of say 10% in their exams extra for uh, their, their sporting talent, which will mean they are not discouraging them to play the sport. And there are, you monitor, as somebody said, you know, the, the, the center of excellences that will come up to ensure that, that the progress is monitored and taken to a level of acceptance in terms of international standards. Hmm. If that happens, what you will do is you will make sure that you're monitoring every grassroots level talent that you have invested in. Yes, some will come off, some won't come off, some will fall along, uh, fall away across that journey. But more importantly, you have the processes right in terms of developing Olympic winners in the years to come. Yes, and one uh, shot or one imagery that stayed with me, uh, Vibal, was that Neera Chopra threw at impressive 87.58 meters, two meters more than the athlete who came second. He did not even look back to see where the javelin landed and he already knew that he had done his best and he is a champion. What is the reason for this confidence and how do we ensure that there are many more like him, like we say, see in other countries, say a China or, or the US? I, I think uh, obviously it is easy to you know see the immediate uh, role model in terms of country like USA or China. But I think uh, if, if India has to look up uh, to some uh, uh, specific country, it has to be Great Britain. Because why I'm saying because we all know unlike uh, other sports, Olympic is not something you get instant success in four years times or eight years. Whenever you plan, it is ten years, twelve years. And Great Britain is a fine example. You look at. 
Atlanta Olympics, similar situation they were there. Yes. Britain has just one gold and total only 12, uh, 12 medals in total. But they knew they were going to host 2012 Olympics in London. So they decided public private funding came. They started working on infrastructure and everything. And look at their medal tally. And ever since, they have been finishing in top five, sometimes even top three. So that, because obviously for many reasons, we can't follow China. What China does, we know. We all, we don't have to vote into details because the, the athletes are pointed. It's literally like someone pointing a gun at you and you have to become an athlete. Mm -hmm. India, India, we, we being a democracy, we can't expect that kind of, uh, you know, uh, setup in our sporting infrastructure. But Great Britain, that is their role model, Great Britain, which learned from its failure. So something India has belatedly learned. They keep, in Olympics games, you can be a world-class winner. That is what Neeraj Chopra has shown. And see, we may see uh, uh, someone like someone who is not following the game, they might get surprised. Oh, suddenly in 100 years uh, in track and field, Neeraj Chopra has won a gold medal. But it was not accidental. If you look at his progress from under yes. 20 days, he won Asian yes. male, uh, uh, gold medal. Consistent. He was Commonwealth mm -hmm. champion. He was consistent. And when he came, when he came in, uh, for Tokyo, he was being seen as top contender. Obviously, it helped his call that his rival was not there. He had to pull out midway, uh, German uh, veteran. But look at his sportsman spirit. Neera Chopra was disappointed. Look at his kind. He was disappointed that his greatest rival didn't finish the, uh, you know, javelin throw for an entire competition. So that speaks volume. Here is the guy who is saying, come on, bring him. Let's have the fair competition. That kind of confidence in besides winning a gold medal, it also gives you, you know, the joy as a sports person. Yes, if you are not, able you, to defeat a world champion, yeah. then you realize that you are yeah. the rightful person on that top of the podium. Yeah. 10 seconds is all I have for you, Shagun. So I feel that uh, as far as uh, take the confidence levels and all that, uh, what we saw with Neera Chopra was technically he was very, very sound. And he knew that when he had thrown that javelin that it is going to land exactly where he yes. wants it because as a professional athlete, when you have uh, a sound technique, you know exactly what your shot's going to be like. So I think technically... Uh, 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 technical help for athletes and uh, coaching at the, from the right age at the start and taking that forward will really help. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, Shagun, Vimal, uh, Dr. Sunita and Shishir Hatangri. Of course, this is something that we have started talking about. It is a turning point as far as Indian sports is concerned. The celebrations have just begun as our heroes have just returned. That's all from me. Thanks so much for watching.